everybody, this is Kevin Dyer from Interpro. Welcome to our webinar on Mark Forged. I'm speaking to you from Glastonbury, Connecticut. We're joined today by Mark Forge's Veronica Diukova, who is in Cambridge, Mass, I believe. Veronica, is that right? Yes, I'm in Cambridge. Here. Brianna Henningsen, who's uh, in the cold north of New Hampshire. <laughs> Hello. And, uh, Diana Nuzolko, who's at our office in Deep River, Connecticut. So welcome, everybody. I hope everybody's enjoying the holiday season and staying warm. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, the presentation today is going to be focusing on Mark Forged and uh, the application around dyeing parts. And we hope you enjoy it and uh, learn as well. Before we get going, I'm just going to give a, a short overview of Interpro and um, what we are as a company and how we, how we come to this. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, we're located in Deep River. Uh, we're in business in our 21st, uh, entering our 21st year now. And um, we are a company that provides services, 3D printing, cast urethane, injection molding, and basically our, our mission is to help engineers make better products faster. Um, stereolithography is our main technology that we use. We have, I believe, eight systems in-house, and here's some shots that show our capability. We run a variety of different materials with stereolithography and build parts up to uh, 20 by 20 by 24 in, in one vat. We just upgraded to a new capability. Uh, this is a technology we call SLA Nano. It's extremely high-res SLA. Um, it's a unique system that's unlike any other in North America. We believe its uh, capability is to produce very, very high-res parts, as you can see here. Uh, very, very thin wall capability with uh, the watershed resin, which many of you may be familiar with. It's the most popular SLA resin, uh, has been for more than a dozen years. Um, what we like to do and what we, we have a lot of call to do is to make clear parts. Here's an example of what a part coming out of that machine looks like when it's clear coated. And um, we, uh, we get a lot of call for that. So we can simulate glass or, or clear plastic uh, with this capability. And one of the things that we've been working with, especially lately, is flow study models such as this. So that's a, that's a view of our SLA capability. Cast urethane, um, many people are not all that familiar with cast urethane. It's a way to go from a rapid prototype part, in our case, usually a stereolithography part, and reproduce it in a material and in a color that is appropriate to the application. So it's a low volume production uh, capability, uh, short, uh, short run production. And as you can see in this uh, particular case, we've taken an SLA, we've made a mold from it, we've uh, poured a cast urethane into the mold, we've color matched it to match the flesh color that our, our, uh, our customer required. And um, the great thing about cast urethane is you can make uh, not just one, but you can make dozens, even hundreds of parts that are exact mirror images of each other with this capability. And it's a, it's, a, it's a much lower cost to get to production parts than injection molding. But our other capability is to uh, go to injection molding. Here's another example of uh, cast urethane and assembly. And uh, just to round it out, this is, this is an example of a project that we've done earlier this year. It shows the full range of what uh, cast urethanes are all about in terms of what you can do to make actual production quality parts that are going to market. In this case, it's a minimally invasive robotic surgery system that we worked with Titan Medical out of Canada to produce the first four units. Most everything you see on this uh, patient cart is, uh, is cast urethane from Stereolithography Masters. So that's what our capability is as a service company, uh, as well as injection molding. So under one roof, we can go from a concept to a full um, full production uh, into the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of parts in thermoplastics as well. Custom painting is another one of our capabilities. So we're very familiar with 3D printing. Uh, FDM printing we also have in-house and as many of you are probably familiar with FDM you can go directly to thermoplastic. Uh, ABS is the most popular material with uh, FDM across the world and uh, we use it for, uh, for doing some of the work we do in-house. But here's an example of where uh, this particular plastic falls short a little bit. We made this roto mold machine in our own shop and uh, to make the gears we printed them on our FDM Fortis out of uh, the standard ABS. But under a very low load, uh, these ABS parts failed. So that brings us to our topic of the day. We're going to share information about Mark Forged and um, what its capabilities are and how it's uniquely capable of producing um, parts 
that are of full production strength and um, unlike any other technology that is available. And we're very excited to, uh, to be working with Mark Forged and to be bringing this technology to you. So I'm going to hand it over now to uh, Diana Nuzioko who will uh, take over the rest of the presentation. And Diana, I'll just move this uh, person to change presenter over to you right now. And here we go. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Just give me one second to bring up my slides here. So as Kevin had mentioned, we recently, or within the last year, joined with Mark Forge, and they have developed the world's first 3D printer that can make everything from plastic parts to parts stronger than metal. But how do they do it? You know, Mark Forge figured out how to 3D print fiber, and they've been affordable enough to put on the desktop of every engineer. But what does that mean? When an engineer designs a high-strength part, Mark Forge offers the only solution in the world that lets that engineer start using that part today. And here we have a video of the chain link. It actually was able to withstand the uh, weight of a school bus before it broke. I want to take a look at that. But the first step was creating a new material with the right combination of properties. It's stiff when you feed it, but it turns into rope when you print it. We, we, they then, then had to figure out how to print without clogging print heads, and that was the real trick. And at the same time, cloud-based software allows the user to make, a, make parts as strong as metal without actually being metal. <clears throat> the Onyx material combines the strength and reliability of Mark Forge parts with the beauty and stiffness of chopped carbon fiber. Onyx is ideal for customers facing, excuse me, customer facing parts that need to look good while standing up to industrial requirements. Added microcarbon fiber reinforcement makes for more stable parts, driving increased dimensional stability and print success rate. Onyx is easy to print and far more rigid in, in your assemblies. <clears throat> the best part of it is that Onyx can be used alone or further reinforced with Mark Forge's embedded continuous carbon fiber, Kevlar, or fiberglass layers, parts truly transcending the limits of conventional 3D printing plastic. Although the sleek black look does produce a wonderful end-use parts, what if you need your parts to be a different color? That brings us to our how-to discussion on painting your Onyx parts. So first step is how to prepare your part. If you use the Mark Forge before, you'll know that laying glue down on your build plate before print will vastly improve your printing results. Once you remove the part from the build, excuse me, the build plate, some glue residue might be left on the part. Wash this residue off with some water and then let it dry. The next step would be to trim off any inconsistencies, like such as uh, small strings or blobs of filament that can sometimes have built up, but a pair of wire cutters or tweezers to clip or pick off the inconsistencies will, will help uh, with ease. Your next step is going to be sanding. If there's any rough patches left on your part, you're going to want to get rid of the well-known uh, fused filament fabrication um, build lines that are end up on there. We, may, we advise using wet sanding, um, 220 grit sandpaper. It'll clear off all the sc scratches, blemishes, and bumps that may arise in your part. But because of some of, a, some of the materials do contain carbon fiber, you're going to want to do this in a well-ventilated ventilated area with a mask. Um, afterwards, you might get some uh, leftover filaments in there, um, maybe some dust. You're going to want to make sure that it's very clean, um, getting into all the corners and cracks. Once the part is dried off, you can uh, use some tack cloth to get in any remaining specks out. But be careful not to over sand. This will erode the wall, ceiling, or floor layers, and all you'll be left with is infill structure. Mm. The next step is uh, picking out your spray paint. The process for spray painting a 3D printed part is very similar to spray painting most other plastics. Unsurprisingly, paints specifically for plastics usually end up working the best. Usually Rust-Oleum or Krylon have a wide variety and color and application of paints that work on 3D printed plastics. But without primer, both materials will absorb paint, so primer coat is necessary for Onyx parts. Pick your primer, pick your paint, and make sure that they work on plastics and you're good to go. Next would be setting up your part. Uh, we recommend usually like hanging it on a wire or a stand. Sometimes intricate geometries need to be accessed, and hanging it up on a wire would be probably your easiest option. If your painting space is limited and, or you're just painting outside, just place your part on some newspaper so that it won't damage the surrounding area or your part. 
If you'd like to make patterns on your part or design or designate specific colors for certain areas, you can use painter's tape to tape off those areas. Here we have the primered piece, um, which is going to be our next step. Uh, the process for, uh, excuse me, uh, once the primer coat is dry, spray the finished coat on, excuse me, I'm in the wrong spot here. Uh, this is going to be your primer coat. You just want to make sure that you put a nice uh, even layer and then you can go ahead and apply your final coat. And then here we have the final, final painted part. Just make sure to let your part dry before final use and handling is recommended by the paint brand. In most cases you can still smell the paint. It's not quite dry yet. Once dry your part is good to go. So now I'm going to pass the mic over to Veronica. She's going to tell you guys a little bit about uh, the Mark X. There you go, Veronica. Thank you, Diana. Hi, everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about Mark X, a, a new product that was introduced in October of this year. Uh, Mark X is a um, carbon fiber 3D printer that has bigger build volume than uh, our existing uh, a product that was introduced earlier called the Mark II, which was a desktop printer. So this printer is bigger and it can print with um, higher layer resolution for a nice smooth surface finish and it can also scan parts for accuracy while you're building the parts. So in this example you see uh, a part that was printed with 50 micro micron layer resolution which is two thousandths of an inch. So as Kevin and Diana mentioned Mark Forged can print parts that have higher strength to weight ratio than aluminum 6061. We can do this uh, with a process that is unique to Mark Forged. It's called continuous fiber, uh, fiber filament. And with this process, we can embed continuous strand of carbon fiber, fiberglass, or Kevlar. And with our desktop system, we can print 100 micron layer resolution, four thousandths of an inch. But with um, a new Mark X, we can print with 50 micron layer resolution. So we're getting closer to SLA type of quality of surface finish and you, you've seen SLA parts uh, early in the presentation. With SLA technology you can get a very nice smooth, uh, smooth uh, part. With Mark Forge you can get very strong parts and now we're getting closer to SLA type of quality for surface finish. So on this slide you see two parts that were printed on Mark Forge printers. One was the part on the left was printed on the Mark II on our desktop system with 100 micro layer resolution and you can see layering it's um, um, the, the, the layers that were deposited on top of an, uh, one another another and on the right you see the same part that was printed on our new Mark X part, uh, Mark X 3D printer and you can see the difference you can see nice or smoother surface finish. Um, Mark X is 2.5 times bigger than Mark II. Mark II uh, build uh, area for the Mark II desktop for the printer is about 400 cubic inches and for Mark X it's about 1000 cubic inches. So you can build really big parts without need for, like you, you don't have to section them anymore. You can build parts in one piece. So for drone is a good example. You can build a drone in one piece or some other big parts that can be sectioned or glued together. Okay, here we have a video of a part that was printed as one piece on the Mark wow. X. And you see it's pretty big. All as one piece. That is amazing. One piece wow. on Mark X. Wow. Okay, and here is another example of a part that was printed on Mark X with onyx material. Onyx material is our, um, that you see black material here, it's chopped fiber mixed with nylon. Very strong part with nice smooth surface finish. All printers come with Iger software. Iger software allows uh, to add fibers automatically or you can add fibers manually. You can 
add fibers in certain layers if you know what kind of pressure or st uh, stress you need to withstand. Also, Iger software gives you information about print time estimate, so you will know in advance how long it will take you to build your part, and you get information about material consumption. Having this information, uh, you will know how much it will cost you to build your part. So here you have a screenshot from Iger software. On the top left corner, you see information. It says 6 hours, 38 minutes uh, build time for this part. And you see information about material consumption, 7.93 cubic centimeters for plastic, nylon, or onyx, and then 7.98 cubic centimeters for fiber. In this case, we're using Kevlar. Kevlar has yellow color, and Kevlar fiber is used for applications where you need uh, flexibility or where you need high impact resistance or high um, um, so parts printed with color can be flexible and can withstand high impact okay and then here you see part printed with uh, nylon and uh, carbon fiber this again this is a screenshot from uh, Iger software and um, parts that you build with fiber, they usually will recommend uh, doing a sandwich panel. If you add some layers on the bottom and some, layer, some layers of fiber on the top, uh, you can prevent parts from warping. Parts that have large surface areas well, built with plastic, with ABS plastic, with nylon, or some other plastics uh, can have this warping or bowing effect where uh, when plastic uh, cools down, it shrinks. So with fibers, you can prevent this warping and you can create those nice uh, big parts uh, with a perfectly flat without warping. Okay, here's another example of a part printed with nylon, uh, white material here, and carbon fiber, continuous strands of carbon fiber embedded into our nylon part. Okay, and here's one of the most uh, interesting features, important features on the Mark X. We talked about uh, 50 micron layer resolution, bigger build area, and uh, this is uh, the third interesting feature of Mark X. It's in process quality control. So Mark X has a print head that has a laser scanner that can scan parts for accuracy. So for the first time, you can scan your parts for accuracy while they're being printed. So usually what happens, you would build your parts. Sometimes it takes several days, depends on the size. Uh, usually people uh, build parts, scan them from, for accuracy, and sometimes they're not true to specs, and they will have to start all over again. With Mark X, uh, we can scan parts while they're being printed, and the accuracy in Z is up to 1 micron, and in X and Y is uh, up to 50 microns. Okay, so here's how it works. In Iger software, you can define critical areas. In this particular case, it's a circle. So you want to measure the circle while it's being printed. So when you um, scan, when you scan a part for accuracy, the laser will scan it for um, all the layers that were already printed. So you can say, I want to scan my part on layer five. I want to scan my part on layer hundred or layer two hundred. So the scanner will scan uh, the the cross section, and then on the top left, it's hard to see here. But you will see in measurements, you will see radius, diameter, all the area you decided to measure. And then you can compare this data to what you have in your CAD software, SolidWorks or some other software that you use. So let's say your di diameter is supposed to be 5 millimeters and what was actually printed was 5.1. And you can say, okay, it's close enough. And then you can continue printing. If it's not close enough, you can stop your print and make necessary changes without wasting time and money because, again, with uh, today's processes, usually people will build their part and then scan it after the fact. Okay, and with that, uh, we are open to questions. Type in your questions in the chat window. Okay, Brianna, if you can um, read the questions and then Kevin, Diane, and I will, will answer the questions. Um, as of right now, we don't have any. Okay, we'll take a few minutes to see if there are any questions about uh, applications, about pricing, about 
speed any questions that you have please type them in in the chat window okay no questions okay if you come come up with questions on my next slide uh, uh, oh, okay go ahead um, the question was um, straight, excuse me, straight sand or circular motion? Um, either one will work. Uh, as long as you're not over sanding, either direction uh, should work perfectly fine. But um, obviously a straight sand might give you a, a cleaner finish, uh, whereas a circular sand is kind of, uh, you could be a little more abrasive in certain areas. Uh, but it is also geometry dependent on the part. Uh, so if you have like strange areas that you can only get in a certain way, you know, don't fear on which direction you're standing from, but either one should work totally fine. I have a question, Diana. Sure. Um, when, um, when we take the supports off the part and if we want to just sand off the little nubs that are remaining, what grit sandpaper do you like to use to do that? Um, I usually recommend 220. Uh, it's just it's not too abrasive and it's not, not abrasive enough. Um, so it'll definitely take off just enough that you need uh, for you, excuse me, it'll take off just enough where you're, it won't allow for over sanding. So anything more than that, um, or wait, I think it's the opposite. Anything less than that might be a little bit too harsh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Um. So Veronica, um, is it next week you're going to be at the Consumer Electronics Show? Yeah, but it's not next. It's January. I forgot. Uh, time flies. I think it's the second week of January. Yeah, we'll be there. Yep. That'll be your third. It'll be your third CES since launch. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's exciting. And we'll have our Mark X there. So. Great. Mark X and parts printed with it. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some parts that were painted. I'll ask, but uh -huh. we'll have our big, uh, greatest parts best parts to show up. Okay. Uh, to our attendees, I'll say too that we're planning uh, a lot more uh, outbound uh, activities like this to spread the word and to especially talk about applications for the, for the Mark Forge technology. Uh, we're planning in January at this point, date is to be confirmed, but we're planning to have a uh, live presentation at uh, CCAT in, uh, in East Hartford, um, Connecticut Center for Advanced Technologies. Veronica, I, I believe you'll be there. We'll have, uh, we expect we will have a Mark X live there as well to demonstrate that technology. So look forward to some communications from us announcing the details of that. That's going to be a really great event. CCAT um, is one of our uh, one of our customers. They have a Mark II that's uh, they've been uh, operating for about six months now, very successfully. So they have a lot of experience with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, have a happy holiday season. Stay warm and safe. And thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.